Hello, my name is Caitlin V3 and welcome to my channel. Today I have my top 10 lessons learned from my first water cooling experience. Now don't get me wrong, I do not consider myself an expert at all by any means, but these are just the things that I learned that I didn't necessarily know before I got into doing my first water cooled build and I figured it would be a perfect time to share them with you guys. So without further ado, here we go. Number one. Give enough space between the bend and the fitting. I did not realize this early enough in the process and I had way too many bends that were very close to the fitting. And when that happens, the curve of the tube and the fitting don't really go together very well at all. And the fitting doesn't sit on the tube uh, as well as it should. So the seal is not 100% perfect going around and even the o-ring cannot stop leaks at that point. So uh, once I realized that, I had to redo a lot of bends unfortunately. So you always want to leave a few centimeters between the bend and the fitting. I know it sounds simple, but I didn't realize it. Number two, use a drain port or at least configure a drain port somewhere in your loop. I have seen others use drain ports and so I kind of had an idea before I went into the water cooled building process that I wanted to include a drain port so I did order a Y connector. The Y connector and the drain port together, oh my goodness, it saved me so much time. Highly recommend configuring this in some part of your build. You don't have to do it the way I did. This is just what I came up with. I'm sure on other builds I would do it differently, uh, but this worked very well for me when draining the, the loop. Number three, be sure that you read which hole on the pump is in and out. The pump from Aqua Tooting was labeled and I didn't realize it. So my, the flow of the water coming out of my pump was completely different <laughs> than what I thought it would be. I don't understand why, why is there no water coming in here? Oh crap when I first turned it on. I thought it was gonna go from the pump to my graphics card. Instead, it went from the pump to the radiator on the front panel. That is not what I wanted. And unfortunately, I had to redo a couple lines because of it. I thought I could get away with it at first and not have to change it, but uh, I was quickly corrected by Jay from Jay's Two Cents after I posted on Twitter and he's like, no, Caitlin you want to make sure your flow is right. And so I fixed it. Number four, screw on the fittings as hard as you possibly can. I did not do this at first, partly because I just didn't know how tight, I mean, you want them tight, obviously, but when I was screwing them on, I thought I had them as tight as I possibly could. And then I turned the pump on for the first time. Things went pretty well at first, and then I noticed that they were all kind of leaking a little bit, just very, very, very slow leaks. So I turned the pump off, I tightened the fittings because suddenly they had some slack and I could tighten them. I don't know if it was the pressure from the pump or if I just didn't tighten them enough the first time, but after doing that a couple of times, I got rid of all of my leaks by just simply tightening my fittings a little tighter. Number five, air pockets and air bubbles. When you first fill up your loop, or at least when I did, I noticed pretty quickly that I couldn't get enough water into my loop. My reservoir was pretty full. I didn't want to add anything extra, but there were large pockets of air inside my tubes and I honestly had no idea what to do. So I asked my very wonderful Discord channel and some friends that have water cooled before and they said you have to tilt your case. But first you have to put the lid on the reservoir. <laughs> so I put the lid on my reservoir, very tightly secured, and I had to tilt my case 90 degrees on each side, which I was very nervous about. <laughs> but that's what I had to do. I had to do that a couple of times. And after a few times doing that and then stopping and starting the pump again, my air pockets were magically gone. And then the air bubbles did work themselves out over time. I just left the pump running for about a day or so. And pretty much all of the bubbles just went away on their own. Number six. Bending PETG is quite an art form, I'm not gonna lie. It takes a little bit of skill and a lot of patience. 
Unfortunately, sometimes that patience can go down the drain really, really quickly when things go poorly, especially if you have uh, a line that has multiple bends and say like the third bend, it just doesn't go right. And then you've just wasted all that time on the first couple of bends um, and that whole tube is now trash. So when things like that happen, or if you're just, you're bending and things aren't going right, take a break. Whenever I was bending and things went terribly wrong, and I don't know why I kept thinking, is this portion of the tube different? What is wrong? Why am I getting bubbles here and not bubbles there? Why is this section crimping and that section's not? Whatever the reasoning, I just took a break and said, okay, I'm gonna do this later. And I would just walk away and then come back and redo it and everything would be fine. I think it's all, it's all in here. But just remind yourself that it takes a lot of patience and you may not get it at first. Some people would do it amazingly at first. It took me a bunch of tries, but I had experience from bending acrylic when I was making my PSU shroud. So I kind of had a feel for it, but even still things could go awry. And instead of pulling all your hair out, just take a break and come back. Number seven, use soap on the insert that you put inside of the tube. The insert doesn't really need soap going in. It's when you're pulling it out that really requires some lubrication. Because if you have a tube with multiple bends, then the t insert can get often stuck inside and the soap will allow it to come out very nice and easily. It's very important just to keep some soapy water on the side so you can just dip that insert in and insert it into the tube. Number eight measure. At first I thought, hey, I can eyeball this. I've seen other water cooler builder videos and they all eyeball their tubes and their measurements. Well, no, that did not work out for me. I learned on way too many occasions that I would eyeball the cut, cut, and then it would be too short and everything would become unusable. And that's incredibly unfortunate after you spent time bending the tubes and then you just you cut too short. What the? Oh my god. I did the bend up here. I went the wrong way. I did it too small this time. I swear, the biggest struggle is not in the bending, it's in the measuring. So measure. As soon as I started measuring, I noticed a, I was no longer cutting too short. In fact, what I would do is I created a paper template and I know it might be, you know, not for everyone, not everyone's gonna need a paper template, but for me, making a paper template and then using the paper template when I was bending the PETG was incredibly helpful and that is what kept me, my measurements from falling to pieces. Number nine, have a spare power supply to use because when you're putting water inside of a computer, you don't want to add power or electricity to that build until you know that all of your leaks are gone or that you do not have any leaks because the worst thing you could do is power the whole computer on and you have a leak and then your motherboard gets water on it and, or your graphics card or any one of your components and then the water just fries your component and then you're in a lot more trouble uh, than, than needs to be. With an extra power supply, you can put a jumper on the 24 pin cable so that it thinks that it's plugged into a motherboard and will then provide power to the rest of the cables, including your Molex, which is what your pump will be plugged into. So once your pump is plugged into the Molex on the extra power supply, then your pump will turn on, none of the other components will be on, and you can test for leaks and flush your radiators that way. And number 10, make sure that you have everything plugged into the motherboard first. In fact, I did a very quick test of power to my motherboard and components before actually beginning the water cooling process and getting all of that ready because I wanted to make sure that I had everything plugged in, my CPU power, my motherboard power, all of my IO ports, my USB, all that. I didn't want to worry about that after the fact because can you imagine getting all of your water cooled done, your pumps in, your 
fluids in and then it just doesn't power on as it should. I mean, we never want to go through that. Things happen, we forget things, especially with water cooling. It can be spread out over many days and you might forget something. So just verify you have everything plugged in. It'll save you time later on. Well, that's it. That does it for my 10 lessons learned from my first water cooling process. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it and you want to see more, then do subscribe. I have a ton of more videos coming your way and maybe something extra exciting for this holiday season. If you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, my links are in the description below. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, since I have recently become a target for the YouTube ad demonetization algorithm, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. My link for Patreon is in the description below and it does come with some interesting rewards and some behind the scenes things that others don't get to see. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, then give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.